All without main ball handler Jalen Brunson, Tom Thibodeau just played Emmanuel quickly 55 minutes, more than any other player has played this season. The shifty two-way point guard had his breakout moment, both delivering when it mattered most and crucially combining with RJ and Julius for an incredible 98 points. As mentioned on the broadcast, Quickly owns the third lowest opponent field goal percentage only behind Jaron Jackson Jr. and Draymond Green. The 23-year-old Kentucky product has the perimeter clamps to make this Knicks team an extremely tough team to get downhill on in the playoffs. Meanwhile, it for the most part was another clutch showing from Julius Randle, who hit yet another step-back bomb in traffic from the right corner in the dying seconds. You're about to see the full details behind why the New York Knicks are dangerous as hell for any team to take down four times out of seven. Right quick, just 13.3% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe and please drop a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. This channel wouldn't be what it was without your support, so thank you kindly. A perfect 9-0 since acquiring Josh Hart from Portland, New York City's basketball team remains seemingly unstoppable. With Julius Randle's ability to create off the dribble at 6'9", while essentially being 250 pounds of all muscle, and also being composed of an 8'10 standing reach, that stature and shot creation allows New York's go-to guy to shoot over the top of anyone in Kevin Durant-esque fashion. However, as I spoke on at the start of my last Knicks video from less than a week ago, you may still have questions about Randall being the main guy on a championship roster. But the fact that he just did what he did to Miami, getting the double bang from Mike Breen by hitting the seemingly impossible game-winning shot from the corner, then came out against the contending Boston Celtics without Brunson and again looked comfortable taking the big shots down the stretch, maybe those questions have been answered. Maybe JR30 is officially ready for primetime. Six Man of the Year contender Emmanuel Quickly is ready for primetime, as this kid just stunned the NBA universe, and most specifically Boston Celtics fans with quite literally the game of his life. Let's break down what makes the former Wildcat in college so damn tough to game plan for from a coaching perspective and individually to shut down from a player's perspective before getting to his old school clamps both on the wing and in the backcourt defensively. IQ's range on his jump shot allowing him to make distance daggers a regularity mixed with his extremely tight, evidently polished ball handling and his no pun intended IQ give Tibbs some elite insurance off the pine Having a guy of Quickly's caliber in terms of his seamless shot creating ability from nothing is an absolute godsend for New York that any other contender would give anything for. But let's be fair to Boston because not only did they come one shot from winning this game, they were missing their sixth man in Malcolm Brogdon, who's been the best three point shooter efficiency wise in the NBA this year. Malcolm's now missed the last two games for the Celtics with an ankle sprain. Having said that, the fact that New York was missing Brunson significantly outweighs the Celtics being without Brogdon in my opinion. This is now the second time in the last week that Boston's been missing a crucial rotation piece in a loss against the New York Knicks, as last time it was second option Jalen Brown sitting out. This time though, the Knicks were missing their second option, yet had others step up in his absence quickly demanded the rock in crunch time and took pressure off Randall like Brunson does, but in his own, you could say, quickly type way. It's time we start labeling this Kentucky sensation as one of the fastest players in the half court and baseline to baseline across the entire NBA. Defensively, Emmanuel's got a balanced ability to first and foremost fight around ball screens with slithery navigation and also at times provide help as the rotating backside defender and it's pretty rare in the modern game that a player can do one of those things well, let alone both. Quickly's ability to contest shots annoyingly and adequately without fouling is another special aspect in his defensive bag. All the tools that make up an elite stopper on the perimeter is what IQ is equipped with. His positioning, footwork, timing to maneuver around the most soundly set picks, and overall attention to detail constantly keeps him in the vicinity of any given attacking player, which can force opponents into ill-advised chucks. Directly ahead of Fred Van Vliet of my Toronto Raptors, on paper, Quickly is the 8th most valuable defensive player at the point guard spot. Over a massive 30 game sample size, this breakout third year guard has posted near all-star caliber numbers. Over that span, 
Emmanuel is averaging 17 points per game on 62.1% true shooting, attempting six threes per night, and knocking down an above average 40% of them. Showing you that the D plus draft grade the Knicks were given in 2020 was straight BS. If you're a fan of New York, you can thank the Clippers for agreeing to receive Markeith Morris in a trade which netted the Knicks the man of the hour in IQ. That shows you why giving up first round picks is such a risky proposition. In the load management, save your players for when it matters most era, you have to respect the stamina from IQ to play a ridiculous near 60 minute game and also the rightful trust from Thibodeau, given this kid just turned 23 and he has nothing to worry about. Tibbs had this to say about Quick. Quickly's my guy, so. <laughs> Quickly, meanwhile, told reporters himself, quote, Sunday night in TD Garden, it don't get better than that. I was telling Julius before the second overtime, I was like, it don't get better than this. We're on national TV in the Garden, other than MSG. This is probably my favorite place to play. I had a lot of fun, end quote. The 98 points that quickly, in addition to first and second round options on the night in Julius Randle and RJ Barrett just combined for in Boston, are the second most by a New York trio in the last 15 seasons. The only trio with more was again, quickly Barrett and Randle just last season. These three scored 102 points against Sacramento. Quickly, Julius and RJ Barrett are also the only trio of teammates in NBA history to each have a 29-8-3 game in the same outing. Scary part about that is, those aren't even New York's typical top three options. Jalen Brunson, who missed Sunday evening's game with left foot soreness, in addition to Julius Randle, are both in the top five in points scored since January 1st, making them the highest scoring one-two punch across the entire NBA in 2023. Whether or not this Knicks team fully lives up to the hype and wins the 2023 championship, they've done something the organization's been wanting to do for several decades now, which is attract top free agents. Winning does everything, and considering this Knicks team is a lot better than the one that was bounced in the first round by Atlanta in 2021, you can expect the Knicks to win a round or two if they get the right matchups, maybe even three rounds, but regardless, New York City will have finally become a marquee destination for top superstars looking to change it up come July and August of 2023. Many will argue this team is one piece away from a chip. Others will stir up the narrative this Knicks team is destined for their first title in exactly 50 years. It makes things easy when you have a versatile rim protector like Mitchell Robinson. We know him as a shot blocking energy guy, but M. Rob is more well-rounded than you think. However, in your opinion, is New York one piece away or built for the chip right now? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. The two commenter shout outs from my last upload in this one are on your screen. This was DFlow and peace.